they sleep. Skyline, no they slumber. Skyline, you lift me high, yo. I'm never going under. Skyline, you know if lie, yo. You know if you buy, yo. You lift me high, yo. I'm never going under.
the process of the enslavement of the poor person like you and myself. Those of us that have been somewhere else for studies, we know that it's not easy to pay for varsity. Pray that the son of the poor man will be dignified when in prayers.
sin mamá y se le guía mamá feliz que ni Dios ve. Thank you for what you are doing. May God bless you. Bless you. That part. And uh, use this opportunity to welcome me. Thank you. Thank you. My very dear brothers and sisters, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome. Um, some people are excited about hearing which but things are changing very much. And I'm, <laughs> I'm doubting myself now. <laughs> Because they called me for a convention, DCC convention, some days ago, and they took all the time, announcements, dancing, and everything. And after one, they called me to preach. And I have prepared a lot. Midway, they were tired. So I asked, should we continue? They said, no. <laughs> That is how bad things have become. But, uh, <laughs> let's see how it goes today. <laughs> the Lord bless you. Um, I'm taking my reading from the book of Revelation chapter 21. The book of Revelation chapter 21. And it's the entire chapter that is given to me. I'm not sure why, but uh, it's the entire chapter. I commenced reading, my friends. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth are passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, um, new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned with my husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of a place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and they shall be no more. Neither shall they have mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this charity, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the poor men, to have the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all lies, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second day. Then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plates, and spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to the great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Its radiance like a most uh, rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates and at the gates and at the gates twelve angels. And on the gates, the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And the one who spoke with me had made the Lord go to make of the city and its gates and walls. The city lies prosper. Spent the name uh, the same as sweet, and he made the city with his own uh, 12,000 stadium. Slant and width and height are equal. 
He also made up a small world, one for four gates, by human legend, which is also an angel's legend. The world was built of uh, just gold, while the city was pure gold, like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with very every kind of jewel. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third um, uh, agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth orange, the sixth uh, carnelian, the seventh uh, crystalline, the uh, eighth bearer, the ninth catopus, the tenth uh, crystal of fresh, the eleventh jersey, the twelfth. Uh, Amethyst and the 12 gates were uh, 12 poles, each of the gates made of a single pole. And the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty and the Lamb. Mm -hmm. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its lamb is the Lamb. Is the slum is the land. By the smile will the nations come, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory to him. And his gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean um, will ever enter no, anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the lands of life. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for minutes, seconds. Father, we thank you so much once again for the great privilege of giving us to listen to your word together. Please, Lord, I humbly request that this word will speak to me and speak to all of us. There is much to learn here. We are asking that the Holy Spirit take a lead in teaching us what this word means and how to apply our daily lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank the minister and the Board of Elders for this great privilege. We are looking at the New Jerusalem, the dwelling of God with men. Fortunately, this one is not working and and at the point, if it is necessary for you to look over there, you may want to do so. It is often said that um, we don't hear messages about heaven and death, except in funeral services. In this regard, I think I am fortunate to talk about heaven for the second time in this church, and thanks to the Ever Center Church calendar, the preaching calendar. And so, um, the last time during our spiritual or revival week, I spoke about heaven. Now, speaking about heaven, um, the plus to the seminary. And even when our minister talks so excited, excitedly about heaven, um, don't tell him this, please, I believe he's not here, so don't tell him. <laughs> even when he speaks uh, very excitedly about heaven during funeral service, he seems to tell us that given the choice, he would rather remain here with his beautiful wife and children. <laughs> And that is to say, those who tell us, uh, those who have gone to heaven are in a better place, and so even and given the chance to come back, they will not come back. He says, if given the chance, they will come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't even tell you. <laughs> not to worry too much about the separation, but the closer, will see his wife in heaven, but there will be no chance to marry. Um, so, thankfully we will see her. Today we are looking at 
the new world order. The new world order that is coming. A new world order. The new heaven and the new house. That is coming soon and will not be delayed. We will look at that and suggest some practical ways to live our lives in anticipation of our permanent home. This means that um, to some degree we can bring heaven on earth now to some degree. And that's why we have a prayer with us. The old order in which we live is a battlefield between Christ and Bethlehem, light and darkness, truth and falsehood, righteousness and wickedness, good and evil. The present world, as I reminded us then, that it is likened to Babylon the great prostitute. Babylon, the great prostitute. This is the world we live in. Full of deception. Full of wickedness. And even when we see lies, corrupt lies, they are painted as truth. Just look at ABC uh, uh, presidential aspirant. They came up with so-called upcoming bishops. They call them upcoming bishops. Mm. And these are people who sell a car on the road, who sell whatever. They, they were robbed as upcoming bishops. Mm. Parallel to the world, and no shame at all, we are still parading the same man as our candidate. That is how deceitful our world is. According to Romans 8, from verse 18, the whole creation is groaning as in the pains of childbirth from the fall to the present time. And the whole creation is waiting in eager expectation of the renewal of the children of God. Even we ourselves are eagerly waiting for this renewal, our final redemption, when we will wear incorruptible bodies, the glorified bodies that we live forever and ever. The book of Hebrews tells us we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus Christ, has entered on our Hallelujah. Amen. Today we are looking at the dwelling of God with men and women. Our final the New Jerusalem, which is the goal of every Christian people. But because the title of our message is the New Jerusalem, it is important we look back to see what the old Jerusalem looks like in the Bible. So we will be guided by two simple questions. Number one question, what went wrong with the old Jerusalem? What went wrong? The old Jerusalem. Number two, what is new in the New Jerusalem? What is new about the New Jerusalem or in the New Jerusalem? What is it that is new? So, first, what went wrong with the old Jerusalem? Friends, why is the old Jerusalem so important in the Bible? In Jerusalem, in the land of Israel, why is it so important? And what went 
got a judgment through the flood. The social and ecosystems were destroyed by the flood. Human beings and the earth were destroyed. But since the fall, God had been working out the scheme of restoration or renewal. See this in Genesis 3.15. And we see this in, uh, in Noah. God spared him. And after the flood, God told him to be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Two times the Lord told him. And God took Abraham as a blessing to the rest of the world. Genesis 12, from 2 to 3. This is God's scheme for restoring human kind back to himself. Not only that, and when God chose Israel, the plan for restoration is very, very clear. God said, now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Meaning that Israel is to minister to the rest of the world as part of God's restoration plan to uh, bring about a new world. And Israel's job description is found in Isaiah 42. I, the Lord, from verse 6, have called you in righteousness. That is Israel's job description in this system. I will take hold of your hand, I will keep you, and I will make you to be a covenant for the people and a wife for the Gentiles. Are you with me? That's the job description God gave Israel. And as you read, for that he says, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. And as you go to Isaiah 49, verse 6, he says, it is too small a thing for you to be my servant to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have given. I will also make you a life for the Gentiles that you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. You are not only light for yourself, you are light. Salvation that is extended to the rest of the world. This theme of light to the nations is followed throughout the New Testament as you read. Luke chapter 2, verse 32, Acts 13, 47, and Acts 26, 23. Take note in the New Testament. Israel as a light in the nations, now the church as a light in the nations. And here is the point, my brothers and sisters. When God called Abraham, God promised him the land of Canaan. This land was going to be for him and for his descendants forever. The Lord told Abraham, the whole land of Canaan, where you are now alien, I will give as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. When God was about to deliver Israel out of Egypt, he repeated the same promise to Moses. God said to Moses, I am the Lord. I have heard the groanings of the Israelites, whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I have remembered my covenant. And I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. 
I am Lord. And in Canaan, now this thing followed gradually. Zion, the city of David, gradually became the synonym for Jerusalem and the land of Israel as a whole. Because of the temple of God in Jerusalem, it became the city of God. The temple became central as God's dwelling place. So we read Psalm 46. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the most high was. And the minister, yeah, read one of those passages at the beginning. And for the prayers, he read also the passage I have here. Other important passages about Jerusalem as the city of God as follows. Great is the Lord and most holy of grace. In the city of our God is in his holy mountain. That is Psalm 48 verse 1. And then he says, as we have heard, so we have seen in the city of the Lord God Almighty, in the city of our God, God makes us secure forever. Forever. That is Psalm 48 verse 10. Forever in the Hebrew language means a long time, not specified, long time or long. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We are a strong city. God makes salvation its walls and ramparts and healing. Wonderful. Beautiful. Psalm 137, verse 1 to 6, shows how some of the exiled Jews who, you know, cherish Jerusalem, will sing like this. By the leaders of Babylon, we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. There, on the populace, we hung our hearts. For there, our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? If I forget to go to Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skills. May my tongue be clean, clean to the roof of my mouth. Let me not speak anymore. If I do not remember, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest job, This talk is not too sweet for some because it's about heaven and so they are closing a little bit. Can you, can you think with me please? Because there, is, there are good things coming. You don't have to sleep this time. Because you will go to heaven someday. So you better listen to what heaven is going to do. <laughs> The city of God did not live up to her name. That's the problem. What went wrong with the old Jerusalem? What went wrong with the old Jerusalem? The old Jerusalem did not live up to her name. Listen, in Ezekiel 5, from verse 5, here we have this. Ezekiel 5, from verse 5. This is what the sovereign Lord says. This is Jerusalem, which I have set in the center of the nations, with countries all around her. Yet in her wickedness, she has rebelled against the laws and decreased more than the nations and countries around her. Are you with me? 
She has rejected my laws and has not followed my decrees. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says, you have been more unruly than the nations around you, and have not followed my decrees or kept my laws. You are not even conformed to the standards of the nations around you. That is Jerusalem. Even to the Gentiles, you have not conformed to their standards. Therefore, this is what the Supreme Lord says I myself am against you, Jerusalem, and I will inflict punishment on you in the sight of the nations. Because of all of your detestable idols, I will do to you what I have never done before and will never do again. They are in your midst, fathers will eat their children, and children will eat their fathers. I will inflict punishment on you and I will scatter you all or scatter all your survivors to the winds. Therefore, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, because you have defied my sanctuary. This is the word. You have defied my sanctuary. With all your five images and desirable qualities, I myself will withdraw my favor. May it never happen to the church. Amen. May it never happen to the church. Amen. Friends, may it never happen to the church. Amen. May the Lord never withdraw his name. Amen. If you don't say it loud enough, you will withdraw. <laughs> I will not look on you with pity or scare you. A third of your people will die of the plague or perish by famine inside you. A tide will fall by the sword outside your walls, and a tide I will scatter to the winds and pursue with a draw sword. Uh, scatter to the wind and pursue with a draw sword. So it means that even as they run to uh, Babylon, God will still pursue them with a draw sword. At a time of judgment. When you read Ezekiel from 6 to 11, there is a vivid picture of Israel's idolatry and the departure of the glory of God from the temple. Ezekiel saw the glory departed. Away from the temple, away from Jerusalem, flying away. Because the people of God refuse to live by the standards Yahweh gave them. The glory departed. After Jesus Christ denounced the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, he ended with this lamentation for Jerusalem. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those who sent to you. How often I have gone to gather your children together as a king gathers a chief under her wings. But you are not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Because Jerusalem became defiled. She suffered time. For the city and the temple that symbolized the presence of God were destroyed. Friends, by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, salvation has been extended to all of us, and we are now the temple of the living God. Is it not something to say out here? That we are now the, what? the temple of the living God. We are now the city of God. Is it not really exciting? In 1 Corinthians, we read, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy them. For God's temple is sacred and you are better. And it says, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not the 
you are on, you are born at the cross. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Friends, the old temple was divided and it gave way to the new temple which is you and I.
darkness in heaven will be limited. There are some incredible pains in each one of us. Pains that have refused to go, even though we have forgiven, even though we, 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 we have released the people from, from our hearts, we no longer hold them responsible. But when those challenges come, the pain is there. When we remember. And I'm saying that if we are going to go to heaven with that remembrance, the same kind of remembrance, the joy they have to me. Think about loved ones who have been killed, raped, and the murderers are going freely. There is a slide I wanted you to see. Um, sorry that uh, you may not be able to see from here is that the Lord, this Lord is not too good. You want to come back, you may see. And you see people lined up. All the people lined up are people who have suffered one thing, nothing or the other. And the one standing there is our very own Professor Kunio was preaching and the program to one diseases in Kaduna and uh, he decided to come for those who have suffered such violence to step up so that they be grateful. And I put a green whatever color, I don't know color spell one, I put uh, one arrow. Uh, you probably see or not see. I don't know colors. No. Uh, I'm very, very poor. What do you call that color so that I don't know today? Blue. Blue bar? Okay, I was calling it green bar. <laughs> so it's blue bar. Okay, thank you so much. The blue color is actually on top of one of those whose wife, with the pregnancy of twins, Kidnapped and cheated. He was also standing for prayers. There are some over there that their relations have been killed, but they have not even recovered the corpses. All those who are standing there, they are pastors. All of them. This is our one. This is the world in which we live. If these people remember that true man in heaven, will heaven be really sweet? I'm not too sure. Not too sure. When the new comes, the new city called the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Isaiah spoke about this new city this way. Away, away, Zion. Clothe yourselves with strength. Put on the garments of splendor. Jerusalem, the city, the holy city. The uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. The new Jerusalem will be a place of perfect holiness. And verse 2 tells us please look at verse 2. It tells us. The new Jerusalem comes down, comes down and heaven from God. It's repeated in past 10 and we will see that later. Hebrews 11 from 8 to 10 says, this is about Abraham. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a, a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed that one, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And for all believers in Christ, the writer of Hebrews says, but you have come to Mount Zion, the city 
of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, you have come to thousands of angels in joyful assembly. Friends, I thought our aim will be present. Because it is not about the future, he is talking about the present that we too have come to the new Jerusalem. Remember, to a degree. To a degree. But then we are already dwelling in the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. Because we have been raised with Christ and are seated with him in glory. The promise to the victorious in Revelation 3 from 2 to 12 is that he who overcomes I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Mm -hmm. Never again will he leave it. Hallelujah. Amen. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. Yes. I do not exactly know. Very sad. In verse 2, the beauty of the holy city, the new Jerusalem, is like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. God. The new Jerusalem must be awesome. By the time you come here next this Friday, the lady you saw here, she will not look the same. <laughs> She will look more pretty. She will look more wonderful. She will look so gorgeous. So spoiling with eyelashes. Don't want to That's the problem of the other day. <laughs> And 
prophet Zechariah saw this. He says, Shout and be glad, O daughter of Zion, for I am coming and I will live among you. I will live among you. The next is God wiping away every tear from their eyes. God, this I love very much. I love this. Because the old order of things have passed away, no tear of sorrow will ever come out from our eyes. Tears are the expression of our deep emotions and feelings of pain, sorrows, and happiness. You know, it could be happiness, it could be sorrow. Tears express that. From Revelation 7 verse 17, we are told, For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from them. All tears of sorrow will be gone. If there will be tears at all, there will be tears of joy. As Isaiah says, they will enter Zion with singing, everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Amen. Praise. What we have in heaven is joy and gladness and happiness forever. Randy Alcorn wrote this. Happiness will be our lifeblood. And just when we think it doesn't get any better than this, it will. Have we gotten the point very well? Did you get it? Yes. Yeah, it says. Happiness will be our life now. And just when we think it doesn't get any better than this, it will. Amen. So at the point you and I are rejoicing and rejoicing and celebrating and saying, God, what is this? Tomorrow will be better. Mm -hmm. That is what it means. Every day will be better than the one before it. And the, and the best is here to come forever and ever. One thing that causes, day, causes pain in this life is death, my friends. And whatever kind of euphemism we use to soften the ugliness of death, we call it transition to glory, falling asleep, going to be with the Lord. They are very good to help us. For death remains a brutal enemy. So the Bible tells us the last enemy to be destroyed is what? Death. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where all death is your victory? Where all death is your still? Here, my friends, we plan for all age, we plan for death. In heaven, one of the new things for us is that we will not plan for all age, we will not plan for death. Forever, we will not plan for death. The young people may not understand this very well, but for us who are growing older, we know that these are in the night. And we wake up with a day that, is, what is this one again? Bad, what is this one? The leg, what is this one again? It's like every day something is telling you, God, prepare, prepare. <laughs> <laughs> we were in uh, America and my wife used to sit with an uh, old uh, lady, uh, English lady. Very old, on the wheelchair. And she will say to my wife, I hate all this. I hate all this. Yeah. And she loves to see my wife come and sit behind her and go chatting. I hate all this. 
How do you not get people to live in your wheelchair? And get it with all my God will eliminate this. Let me refer to that book today. That, um, verses 5 to 6 assure us about the trustworthiness of all that is revealed. So the Lord says, I am Alpha, I am Omega, the beginning and the last. Meaning that what I'm saying is true and nothing can change it. From verse 9 to 27, friends, this is exciting for me, very, very exciting, because as you look at it, uh, 9, it says, Then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls, full of the seven uh, last plates, and spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. Are you getting this one now? I will show you the bride, and what did he show you? Jerusalem. Are you getting it now? Now look. The new Jerusalem is called the bride of Christ. So in the new Jerusalem, uh, so is the new Jerusalem a place or a people? That's the question. Is the new Jerusalem a place or a people? Hmm. In 1987, a scholar, Robert Gondry, I think maybe it's a scholar, see I know, know this uh, famous New Testament scholar, he wrote an article with the title, The New Jerusalem, People as Place, Not a Place as People. Did you get it? People as Place, Not a Place for People. This means that the New Testament is the unified people of God every tribe, every people, every language, this is the New Testament. Right? That is the New Testament. Don't you understand? This unified people of God have become one entity called Holy City. See, when God made the garden Eden, he brought in who? Adam and Eve. Now, when God prepared the new heaven and the new earth, whom is he putting in? The bride. He made Eden, put Adam and Eve in. Made the new heaven and the earth, put the bride in it. Is it not complete? Are you hearing? Mm -hmm. One of the books I would like so much is uh, by Desmond Alexander from Eden to the New Jerusalem. So, repeated in this chapter is the fact that nothing unclean will enter or dwell in this city. Are we together? Nothing unclean. But what about the dimensions? You will have the dimensions are mentioned, uh, this, the measurements. The measurements of the city must be understood figuratively, not, not literal measurements. If we go by the text. Otherwise, the make of it is really is very, very small. So it must be correct. People hate the Bible, people hate God because of the high standards, the restrictions. But whether we live 
received by Christian ethical standards or not, we cannot avoid some restrictions. Written and unwritten operational manuals are everywhere, my friend. We cannot escape rules, whether good rules or bad rules. And how would this new world look like? Please, uh, Project Chorus was beautiful. Uh, the foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. Can you see those? Mm -hmm. Move on, just to show us. The great the street of the city was of pure gold, the transparent gold. This is to say that the redeemed of the Lord will live in the most beautiful habitation we could ever imagine in our minds. The city has no need of one. Sun, moon, or any land. Friends, as we come to a close, in a way, getting closer to the close. <laughs> the new Jerusalem is so exciting, and we will all, like angels, traverse the new one and the new year. No constraints. And this will be our state forever and ever. Friends, the Bible tells us that the saints of God will rule in the new Jerusalem forever and ever. And whether we will understand this very well or not, I don't even understand. But we are going to experience Perfect government, perfect justice, perfect righteousness, leading in the best way possible. The wickedness we are experiencing will no longer be our country. See, on way coming from America, I tune to audio cassettes in the play. The audio cassette is a book by Simon Simon. And the title is Leaders It Last. Leaders It Last. And, and it is demonstrating the Air Force in America, how they get out for each other, how they sacrifice for one another. When the fighter jets are there and they're there, how they struggle to ensure that this one is protecting the other until they reach their mission. And how, you know, in the Air Force, everyone is concerned about the other. And the leaders ensure that the interest of the followers is taken first. And the sacrifice that leaders make for others to enjoy. That's the point. So from America to Ethiopia, until we take the play, I never stop listening to the whole book. The whole book. It will finish, listen, finish, go back, listen, listen. So I decided to download the PDF book. And the other time I went to Abuja, I went to a, a supermarket and I bought half of it. Leaders eat last. And I grabbed it because the message about the sacrifice leaders call to men for followers to benefit. I took this book with me. Normally, when I'm going to a place, I, go, I know I will have to sit for some time. I take a book with me. So I was with this book in the hospital. Checking for my turn to come. And when the doctor came in, our own very hospital here, and he saw me, he said, You always come with the book. Which one is this one again? I, I said, Talk, see. He said, Leaders in Mass. 
He said, hmm, not in Africa. <laughs> as it is in heaven. 